Hey, what's up, guys? Ryan Garrison here today. I am joined by someone who I first started following on podcasts with Steve Trang and RJ Bates and all those guys. And now I ended up connecting with him on the broker world. And now I am I'm connected with this man in, in a group that he created as a co-creator called The Real Family Tree. His name is Matthew Potter. And I think that today is going to be able to bring a lot of value to my groups, but also to prospective agents that might be looking for a change or maybe looking to get your license for the first time. Matt, why don't you take a second, introduce yourself, give everyone kind of a brief rundown of who you are and what you do. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. Yes, we connected through our good friend, Pardon the Destruction. It's a great, it's a great one. For those that don't watch it, should watch it because it is great. I am just your run-of-the-mill short sale guy that's done a couple short sales, realtor, investor side, traditional side, all of those wonderful things. I started out I, honestly by accident in real estate back in 2007, and the market completely shifted. And instead of being able to do land development, I ended up learning how to do a short sale, and then I got really good at it. And then I got really good at it and started helping a lot of other agents and homeowners and things like that. And we've kept that going for years and years. And we now at this point, I think it was about two weeks ago, we just went over 19,000 that we've completed nationwide since 07. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Now it's a race to 20. Mm -hmm. want to get want to get there as soon as possible. And then in the meantime, through the process, giving people education, the opportunity to add it as a tool and a resource into their tool belt when they're out there with working with a seller that may be in a tough situation. Having this knowledge is paramount, especially for me right now in the current market, particularly the market here in Phoenix, but we're also seeing it in many other markets. It's really helpful to have this because going in there of, hey, by the way, I can only offer you these three options versus, hey, here's a fourth option that encompasses everything prior to a foreclosure sale. Would you, would you be willing to try it? It's not going to cost you anything. And ultimately, if we're not successful, you're in the same boat that you're in right now. Generally, most sellers are going to say, what do I have to lose? That's a thousand foot overview of kind of what I do. There's a lot of other stuff like you had touched on. We have our network at our brokerage, the family tree. I'm a co-founder of that with Ryan Zolan, my wife and his girlfriend. And ultimately our goal with that was bring together, meld the investor and agency world, bring them together so that we can serve more people. And it's super cool because when you have like-minded people that are really working towards solutions, along with helping buyers and sellers resolve their problems, Man, magic happens and deals get done. Everybody eats and everybody wins. So that's the thousand foot overview right there. Awesome. We're going to have some prospective agents and also agents over at other firms, and that kind of thing, watching this. And <clears throat> I guess, in, at least in our market, it hasn't really started to happen yet. I know some of the stuff in Phoenix, Phoenix seemed like it was like gasoline on a flame with the market. And then it seemed like Phoenix and Vegas, maybe a couple other markets, they go up faster than some other ones and they come down a little bit faster too. And so you're seeing it more. I, my personal belief is it's going to be expanding in other markets in the country. And right now is the time to learn more about, about short sales, about pre foreclosures, about that kind of stuff. But maybe if, for the agents that aren't as familiar with it, that haven't gone through, and I don't know if you really get a whole lot out of the NAR short sale foreclosure course or anything in there. You get a little icon you can use if you pay the 400 bucks or whatever, right? Of course. Um, <laughs> alphabet behind, it, behind your name. Right. You know, on, on LinkedIn, it feels special. Can you maybe, obviously, I know this is a lot more content than we're going to have time for, but let's walk an agent maybe through the process, how, and then also maybe a little bit of ideas of different ways they can monetize in this too. And if that involves bringing in your company or someone like you or, or trying to do stuff on their own, what they have to, how it goes, what they have to do. Yep. So a short sale, the way that a short sale works is ultimately it eliminates the two things that most sellers are going to probably not necessarily argue, but it's, it's the pain point when mm -hmm. they're, lo they're looking at selling their home. It's price and it's commission. The bank's going to pay the commission. Price is going to be determined by the bank. So ultimately at the end of the day, you've eliminated that factor. 
With regards to short sales and how to monetize them and how to add them into your tool belt is we offer a processing service nationwide where we will, we would partner, for example, with you, Ryan, on a listing in Washington state. Mm -hmm. You would ultimately be boots on the ground. You would do the listing docs. You would do the short sale package. You'd send all that over to us. We would handle everything with the uh, respective lien holders that are on the bank, on the property. And then ultimately from there, we would obtain the approvals that are necessary to close. Ironically enough, we literally have one that's in Washington state that was sent by a broker that we know. He sent it over. He's like, dude, I don't know. Like I... I found it. I don't know what to do with it. You're the guy. And I was like, we got you. Not a problem. We've been working on that one for about five weeks. It's in the process of being approved right now. Like it's literally to the point of approval. So for on the agency side, it's a great way to ultimately be an agent. If you really want to get down to it, like you are providing a service to the seller. The bank is the one that's ultimately paying the commission on it as well. And it is, it's providing you that opportunity to assist that seller and in an agency capacity. Now, looking at it from an investment strategy, there is the opportunity with some of them to take them down, maybe at a discount from what the current market value is. Everybody always asks me, what price will a bank take? Everybody wants to know. Mm -hmm. That's the million dollar question. And the answer to that is always, it depends. depends. Yeah. It, it is property specific. It is situation specific. It, mm -hmm. it is um, because on the back end of that mortgage, there is a, there's an investor that mm -hmm. owns that paper. They're the ones that are going to make the determination of what they're willing to sell the property for. So from an investment strategy, you do have the ability to go in again. We'll just use another example. Say that you found a property you wanted to purchase for maybe a fix and flip. Let's just say mm -hmm. it met your criteria there. With regards to that property, you would not be the listing agent on it. You would have somebody else list it because the bank's not going to pay you as the buyer a commission to buy, to buy the property at a mm -hmm. discount. They're just not going to. I've had people that will argue with me until they're blue in the face on that. And I'm like, look, the answer is no. I'm just letting you know that is the answer. There's no way around this. And they're like, what if I do it through an LLC? And then if I get yeah, the, the whole yeah. thing and I'm like, look, that's great. <clears throat> you still have to send articles of a corporation that show mm -hmm. who the members are of the LLC. So unless you're not a member of the LLC, it's a moot point like it is. So it's one of those, like just partner up with an agent, have them list it. You go ahead and be the buyer and submit your offer. From there, depending on what they end up approving on it, will when they may come back and they may say, hey, look, we need X amount. You say, nah, that doesn't work. Okay, fine. You exit stage left. It gets retailed out. It sells. It's not the end of the world. They may come back and say, yeah, hey, your offer's in line. We'll go ahead and approve it, which if that's the case, congratulations. You got yourself a new investment to work with. You got a fix and flip, a buy and hold. Um, a burr. I don't know a lot of people that are doing burrs right now with where rates are, yeah, but there's back in the day that was a method when rates were five, not really an issue there. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can do that. One of the things that I always try to, I, I like everybody to just know up front, you are not going to assign a short sell. It's not going to happen. The bank isn't going to allow you to just assign it over to somebody else. I have had people argue with me about that one as well. And I'm like, look, at the end of the day, the bank specifically states on their approval that there's going to be no assignment. Quick question on that. Does I still understand that the, the LLC sale method might work or is that, is they going to nix that too? In theory, it does. Okay. This is the thing. In theory, a lot of things work. In theory, right. communism works if we really want to get down to it. It, it, do, it doesn't mean that it may be something you want to participate in. Though. So what I usually tell people with the, the LLC model or something like that, if the numbers are good enough and there's no deed restrictions that are presented, just get a transactional lender and do a double escrow. That's going to be your safest, easiest way. You've adhered to the terms of the approval. The buyer is able to legally buy the property from you, not an issue. Because when you start making changes to the LLC, and this is the reality, 
the bank has a lot more money than you will. I promise you Wells Fargo has more money than you do. Chase does, any of them do. And if they sense in any way whatsoever that there has been something that's outside of the norm of what they're allowing, they're ultimately gonna come at you with the hammer of God. And you don't want that. I know that agents are always gonna randomly come across onesie, twosies, whatever, like that says, oh, I, I found this seller and they found me and they owe too much on their house or their house is a dump and now it's just not going to, it's not going to sell. That's going to happen no matter what, but how can we be more aggressive? Do you, do you recommend going maybe to asset managers directly? Do you, what kind of methods can we do to maybe increase our opportunities to find more short sales and maybe pre foreclosures, that kind of thing? Gotcha. So Going to an asset manager, that one's going to be difficult because most of the time the banks are just, you know, hey, we can't assign these out to anybody. We can't give that information out. Mm -hmm. The best way that I found is go through your lists. Investors use lists a lot. Mm -hmm. So do agents, your pre foreclosures, your little to no equities, your absentee, your honestly, depending on the state. A lot of success with people who have passed away with reverse mortgages because those mm. can be shorted. So okay. those are some of the best ways to go and target properties that ultimately may be short sale opportunities. Okay. Other groups. So I'm in another group that they do short sale pre foreclosure stuff and then offer services and have third parties and stuff with that. Some of them charge pretty solid fees not on commission, they get added maybe to the buyer at the end of it, not necessarily from the seller. And do you, with your, the way you do it, do you have additional like charges, fees, services that you can um, increase revenue or are you strictly doing an off referral commission or how do you do it? I do it strictly off referral commission. So we'll just use a hypothetical, say that you had a short sale listing. It's going to be 1% that will come to us. The other 5% is for you and the other broker. So that's the way that we have that structured. Mm -hmm. um, ultimately, we don't charge fees to the seller. We don't charge fees to the buyer because more often than not, the bank's not going to pay it. And then in addition to that, when you're talking to like a buyer, it's pretty shitty to come to them and say, hey, look, by the way, you need to pay me five grand to go ahead and do this as well. Mm -hmm. I, I found it's much easier to do volume at a lower margin rather than onesies, twosies, and try to get a higher fee from a buyer and things like that. So we actually snipe off a lot of business from people that do that model. Mm -hmm. I'm not knocking it in any way whatsoever. It's just for us, we found this is a much easier and cleaner way to provide the solution to mm -hmm. all parties and be able to get it to the finish line without these hurdles or hiccups or anything like that, because the bank at the end of the day is scrutinizing it because they're losing money on it. So they're mm -hmm. like, Hey, look, we're only going to allow X amount of fees to be approved, things like that. Even on the buy side, sometimes they'll get a little uppity on that as well. So for us, it's look, if the commission's there, it's baked into the approval process anyways, might as well just do it off of a referral commission, do a good job. And instead of doing just one deal, end up doing 10 deals, 20 deals, 30 deals with that particular agent and creating that long lasting relationship that ultimately keeps both, both parties fed. Yeah. The, the fee model definitely can get pricey. I think the one, one of them in particular, I remember they were a 10 grand minimum fee cool. and, and I, I don't know, maybe you can tell me, correct me, but I, I think the way they market it is like, Hey, we have an approved short sale. Here's the price. Maybe it includes the fee in that price. Maybe that they market it. I don't know, yeah. but that's, that's a good chunk of dough. And uh, then you have would depend, depending on a price point, hell, that could be 10% right there. Mm -hmm. That's a, that is a healthy fee for sure. God mm -hmm. bless them for being able to get it. But like I said, I'm a firm believer of do volume. Yeah. Um, all, volume will always win. The fast yeah. nickel will always beat the slow dime. It always will. Especially as you have the systems, if you have everything in place to be able to process it efficiently. Yep. Yeah. So what, talk to me a little bit just about your real estate background. Like where did you, as an agent and everything, how did you get started and then what brought you to where you are now? So funny story on that. 
The reason that I'm an agent is because the state of Arizona finally decided they wanted me to be an agent while I was doing all these short sales. So <laughs> like for God, what was it? Six years. I was just the man behind the curtain. I was mm -hmm. not technically licensed. I was licensed because of our business structure, but I didn't do anything with it. He finally came out and said, Hey, look, we want you to be licensed. And I was like, okay, fair enough. And I ended up at that point, I had pretty much done a short sale for every brokerage in Arizona. It felt like, so I had a pretty good idea of what all the brokerages were like, what they had to offer. And I ended up saying, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and hang my license with Steve. That's Steve Trang over at Stunning Homes. He had just opened it up because I knew at the end of the day, Steve was going to let me operate the way I needed to. So that's how my agency career, if you will, started. And he was and a private broker, right? He wasn't under a big one. He was, was correct. A private. He okay. was, he, for lack of better words, he was a boutique. He was, I think at the time I was agent number like three there, maybe okay. mm -hmm. <laughs> two, three, something like that. Mm -hmm. Went aboard, learned the traditional side, mixed it in with the short sale and the investment side and took off from there and just started going full speed ahead. <laughs> I think my first year between short sales and traditional sales, and these were all like my listings that I was personally doing. Mm -hmm. I think I closed 63 transactions and Steve was like, holy shit, dude, that's not normal. You know that. And I was like, I feel like I could be doing a lot more. And he's no, he's like most realtors in their first year, they close like a deal, maybe mm -hmm. two deals. And I'm like, Oh, cool. So I guess I'm ahead of the curve. I'm like, oh, okay, that's great. And then from there, I think I want to say it was 2020, 2021. It was 2021. We had, because of our history with short sales, we had one of our private equity funds reach out to us. Mm -hmm. And that was when real estate became really fun. And it was on a recommendation from Steve. Steve was like, look, Matt and Nicole are the ones that have done all the work you don't want me doing the work for you guys go talk to them and they called me and they were like hey we want to buy some homes in phoenix and these are the same guys that bought a bunch of our short sales back in 2010 2011 2012 and i was like oh okay yeah we'll help you and then i think it was in 21 in nine months we closed on 474 deals mm -hmm. and then after that in 22 we only got six months of time before obviously the market shifted but I mean, in 22, I think we still ended up closing like another like 250 right there. So mm -hmm. it's funny to me because a lot of people at the time told me I was really stupid for aligning with Steve. Steve had a high cap in, in their world. And they were like, why would you go over there? And these are people that are still at the same 100% shop. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they're still closing their 50 deals a year, which like, don't get me wrong. There's no hate on that. Like 50 deals a year is a great number. Like that's or 15 fantastic. deals a year, right? It, it is. It's mm -hmm. absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. But the thing that's funny is these are the same people that will sit there and say to me, like, how did you end up getting these? How did you end up getting these buyers? And how did you end up doing this? And it was like, well, it was through that relationship of being with Steve and Steve making that introduction. So that was one of the things for me that was super cool with all of this was Steve ultimately opening doors that otherwise may not have been open. Mm -hmm. So. Like I said, just my two cents on that one. Not, Not to really. go off on a tangent. <laughs> Here's the good news is that if you do another 500 this year, Steve can get a new Tesla. Absolutely. Right. He needs a new yeah. one. He needs yeah. a new Tesla. <laughs> oh, man. And then Steve, I, I believe at some point in there, he decided that being a broker maybe isn't as attractive as being with a broker, right? Especially if you can get the right one. When did he maybe close that shop and come over to real? Here's the thing that I love about Steve. I, mm -hmm. I have the utmost respect for Steve. I, I do. Mm -hmm. I'm still amazing, great friends with him. Eventually, he might answer a question properly on PTD, so he'll get some points from me. Right. But, or, or more funny, anyway. Uh, right. more, yeah, just get, give, me that, <laughs> give me that good, dry Steve wit. I need some Steve wit. <laughs> so here's the thing that's awesome about Steve. Throughout the history of Stunning Homes, he had opportunities to roll the brokerage over. He originally looked at Keller Williams. 
Mm -hmm. We went through everything. It just didn't make sense. Looked at Remax, didn't make sense. Looked at EXP, mm -hmm. didn't make sense. Finally, he came to us. I want to say it was, let me think about this. It was March of 22. He came to me and my wife and said, hey, I think that real is going to be more beneficial for you than just being with me. And I was like, okay, let me take a look at this. So I did. And it made more sense. And two weeks later, we rolled the whole brokerage over into real system. And since then, it's been absolutely great for us. It's been great for Steve. It's been great for everybody that's joined us. It's created much more of a community because we were, I joke around, I call it, you're a whale in a lake because you're within the confines of Arizona. Like mm -hmm. it's, you're not going to grow outside of Arizona if you're at a brokerage that's only in Arizona. Real is a national brand. The likelihood is that you and I connect on, especially an agency brokerage level, is extremely slim if I'm still at Stunning Homes. Like yeah. if it was just, if it stayed Stunning Homes. Right. Through the power of real and community and collaboration, you and I now have alignment there. And it's, I can help your business, you can help my business and vice versa. We can help other people's businesses, regardless of what state they're in. That for me, I was like, okay, hey, this makes sense. Like we got to make this decision and make it make sense. And like I said, once my wife signed off on it, I'll be the first one to admit she's the smartest one in the room. Most of the time mm -hmm. she went through everything from a legal aspect. And she was like, yo, this is it. The, this is the one, this is the one that actually makes sense. This is the one where I can get behind it with leadership and management and all the perks that are there, the splits everything. She's, this is the one that we should make a move on. And I was like, okay. And we came over, I think 3,500 agents is where they were at. Mm -hmm. I think they were only in at the time, I think it was like 34 States. Mm -hmm. We came over like before it really started to go. And then now we're at all 50 States, six Canadian province provinces. I know we're over 15,000 agents now it's grown five times from when we were there. And I'm like, wow clearly made the decision at the right time to, to come over. So that's, that's the story of how that happened. And like I said, I'm grateful to Steve looking at it from a aspect of, look, this benefits, this benefits my people. Like it benefited him, of course, mm -hmm. but it benefits my people so much that it's stupid for me to keep my brokerage open. Like those were his exact words. He was like, look, it's just lining my pockets it isn't where it's at. I want to be able to help more people make more money and be in a better position. And I was like, all right, like you don't get that from most brokers. Like, let's be honest, mm -hmm. independent or otherwise, most of them are looking out for bottom line and their pocketbook. And it is what it is. I'm a team lead. I looked at it the same way. I even adjusted our team lead splits when we moved over. Everybody got a 10% raise. Like None of my team is pissed at me. <laughs> like all of mm -hmm. them are like, cool, I'm making 10% more per deal. So like I said, that's how that part went down. Yeah. I can tell you also, I came from EXP and mm -hmm. for part of it for me was that I wanted to be around more people that were doing investment level stuff and EXP is a good company, but they aren't as in alignment with investors and people doing off market. They are very anti like wholesaling and that kind of thing. And it just made it harder. So you're actually like, if you did actually assign a deal, you're pretty much violating your agent agreement with EXP. Yep. And, and I did get in trouble one time. So that was a big thing with me was getting around people maybe that are not maybe getting around people that are doing the type of business that I want to do so I can be around those people and just by proximity, hopefully increase the level of business I'm doing, the level of knowledge, talent level that I have and being able to just grow. And so that's a big thing that brought me over with you guys. And also I just, anyone that's given RJ Bates crap, a lot of times that's worth it. You get to hear that. But I want to know, I guess from the family tree, the real family tree part, mm -hmm. I'm in the family tree. I'm in it with you and Zolan. And I brought in a couple agents already. And I'm, the goal is to expand our local network up here and bring in more. Um, what are, Maybe if you have 
plans down the road or maybe different things. What do you see as far as the growth that's there, the different things you're trying to bring in the future, the next stages of the family tree? What's the growth plan look like? And what's the agent benefits you think as we grow? You really touched on it of that proximity, being around people that are doing the things you want to do or that are in the process of doing things that you want to do. We find that to be a huge benefit when we're talking to agents that are interested, curious, whatever it is, because similar to your story, a lot of people that have joined us, particularly from other brokerages such as eXp, where maybe wholesaling is not looked as friendly upon, it's, hey, we'll welcome you with open arms. We'll go ahead and help you out. We'll, we'll help you and guide you through that process. So that was one of the big benefits that was there. And then obviously you've been part of our calls and things like that for a long time. Our growth pattern on it and our goal for our agents is let's give you actual tactical like steps of how to increase business whether it's working with more investors whether it's more agency side or a combination of both we talk about innovations and how to go ahead and incorporate that into your business and work with investors on it obviously through our short sale side there's wholesaling on market off market obviously zolan talks a lot about and that's his thing on market deals we're in the process of also looking at bringing in some of the other people in the industry, just not RJ, because we, we, we don't need that bearded Viking on there. We, we don't need that. No, RJ Bates is a great guy. He, he is. He's a great guy. But we're looking at bringing those people on to talk about their respective businesses and what they do to help people. Hey, look, here's some free game to go ahead and help you increase your business. That That is one of our goals. We're, I think Ryan and I had said this at the beginning of the year. Our goal is we want to have a thousand people that are ultimately in our network all across the country, where it's a group of like-minded individuals that are going to be able to pass business opportunities back and forth, JV deals, work on referrals. Hey, whether it's traditional or whether it's investment, here's a referral. I already do that on the short sale side. I try to pass them out everywhere that I get somebody that's unrepresented. I'm like, hey, here you go. If it's in if it's in your area, it's Ryan, here you go. Here's a listing, go list it. And those are huge opportunities that we're trying to provide back to our agent network. And then the power of community is amazing. We had this, I want to say it was like two or three weeks ago on one of the calls. Somebody was talking about a, a deal in, I want to say it was Tennessee. I don't know why. I think it was Tennessee. Another guy said, hey, I actually have a buyer that's in Tennessee. Now, mind you, one of these guys is in Arizona. The other guy's in Florida. So mm -hmm. it's not like either one of them are in Tennessee. They ended up linking up, putting the deal together, and they both ended up benefiting from it. They both ended up earning a paycheck on it. And it's that's super cool when you're creating those opportunities. Like Again, I just look back to when I was with Stunning. It's not that there weren't opportunities there. There were a ton of opportunities. That's why I was there. But the reality is it was in a lake, not an ocean. And mm -hmm. that's one of the things that we're really trying to get here is, hey, let's go ahead and fill the ocean, stock it with a lot of good fish that ultimately everybody can work back and forth with each other and create those opportunities. We have people coming aboard in Minnesota, North Dakota, Montana. If you would have told me a year ago that I would have an agent in Montana that I could be like, hey, here's the deal. Like you can, they'll go ahead and help you out. I would have said, yeah, probably not. It's just, it's not a stranglehold for short sales or anything like that. But we're starting to create that, that full blown community, which is what has mm -hmm. been the goal from day one. I think when we started out, we had six people in the family trade, like no joke. I think mm -hmm. we started with six. I think we're up somewhere over 200 now. And it's one of those things where for perspective's sake, three weeks ago, it was at 120. And you're talking about 80 people got added in three weeks and it continues to grow through conversations from us, but also from conversations from people such as yourself that are in the family tree that are like, hey, I invite you to check this out and see what kind of benefit it would have in your business. And a lot of people are like, dude, this is... This is exactly what I'm looking for. Let's go ahead and do it. So like I said, super happy. We know that it's a, a long-term plan, not mm -hmm. something that's all going to be done overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day, mm -hmm. but 
the reality is from where we started to where we are now, we've had tremendous growth and we haven't even really gotten into being super loud or vocal on social media. We don't run paid ads like some people do. You're, you're mm -hmm. scrolling on Facebook and all of a sudden you're like, oh, damn, this ad again. No, mm -hmm. we don't do that. It's all been referral and word of mouth right now. Absolutely. And one thing I will go with too is if you are interested, if you're, if you want to see what the family tree, what real has to offer, I got a link right here. There we go. There, there you there go. There you go. There you right. go. Yeah. And so you can actually, you can click in there and you can go there to, to get into the system, start looking at some of the materials, some of the bennies. I went to a workshop last week down in Florida and the one thing that probably stuck with me more than anything is there was an MC of the event and his name was Paul Conti. And he, he came with the point of, are these people that you are surrounding yourself with that you're paying monthly, whether it's you're paying in general, whether it's accounting, whether it's insurance providers, whether are they providers or are they partners in your business? Uh -huh. And and I, I've got people that I use for contracting stuff. I've got people I use for insurance. I've got people I use for accounting, bookkeeping. And when I started thinking about it more and more, they're providers. I pay them, they do something but it doesn't help me move the needle in any way, shape or form. I could just as easily find another insurance person and it's not going to change my business if I'm using that other person. So I'm, that's one of the, and it wasn't, I wasn't able to articulate that philosophy, but that was one of the things that brought me over to real and in the family tree is I would, when all the time I was with EXP, there was people there I liked, I actually had an office I could go to. That was cool, but that's not normal at EXP. And, uh, but I didn't get one deal the entire time I was there because I was with the XP or even really one opportunity to do a deal because I was with the XP. Right? And that was one of the things is I'm trying to surround myself and get into situations where I'm with people that are partners in my business, not just providers. And that's, I think the way that more people in this business need to look at it. Dude, I, your comment could not be more timely because Nicole and I had this discussion. I kid you not. It was probably mm -hmm. last night or the night before where it was, it feels good to be with a brokerage that is a partner in my growth versus just somebody, just an entity that's there that mm -hmm. ultimately takes a split and okay, cool. We've kept you in compliance. We continually are trying to give back to their agents of, and this comes from, it comes literally from the CEO, Tamir. Tamir has a plaque above his door that says, how can we make agents' lives better today? And he, this is a thing I'm going to tell you. At first, when I looked at real, I was like, eh, I was like, whatever. We'll see if they're all about this, whatever. We'll move over. Under a worst case, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's fine. I can go somewhere else. It's not the end of the world. And I was like, I can't actually fathom that there's a CEO that really gives that much of a crap about the people that are there. Because it's such a foreign concept, as, as sad as that is. It's a foreign concept in business. It, it, it honestly really is, especially when you're dealing with a, a publicly traded company. So then it was, came aboard, they made adjustments to revenue share, but they made adjustments to revenue share in the benefit of the agent, where it was like, hey, instead of having to have whatever it was, 10 agents to get to your tier two, you only need five agents that are producing. Okay. Hey, that changes the game. Like it creates more of a opportunity. Hey, here's a joint venture title company opportunity. If you want to participate in it, Hey, we have in-house lending. Here's an opportunity for you as well. All of a sudden you start looking at everything that they're trying to do to help you. Like they came across with health insurance. Okay. Health insurance is a struggle for most agents. Like it is, Hey, there's an option that is available. God forbid, let's be honest. We're all human. It happens. Say I pass away. My wife is my beneficiary. Everything goes to her. She continues to get the benefit. Just like I'm still there. She ultimately gets all the benefit. Like those were things for me where I was like, Holy crap. I really feel like I have a partner in a brokerage like it's like you said it's not a provider it's not just hey i pay you give me check like that's no disrespect to steve but in a lot of ways that was that part of 
just the broker dynamic, not the Matt and Steve dynamic, the broke the brokerage dynamic, because I didn't need a lot from the brokerage side was the thing. Mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't. And to an extent, I still don't at this point. It's just there's a lot more benefit that's there. And that was one of the number one things Steve kept driving home. I was like, bro, why are you making this change? I'm busy. I got a bunch of escrows. Like, I don't want to do shit. Like, I just want to sell homes. And he's, this is going to benefit you at a much higher level. Like, you, mm-hmm. we need to make this move. And Steve and I, at times, we will butt heads, but in a totally respectful way, but we will butt heads. And it's, I don't want to do this, blah, blah, blah. And he's, this is going to be good for your growth. So either A, you're buying the brokerage or B, you're going to move. And I'm like, all right, I need to clearly <laughs> actually look at this. And like I said, once once we've done it, it's, it's amazing having a partner versus a provider. It is. Mm-hmm. It's, and the weird thing is, like you said, you struggled with the words to be able to quantify it, to put it in words. Because you didn't, oops, you didn't even know that those were the words you were looking for. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like when Nicole and I were having that conversation the other evening, I was like, I didn't even realize that's what we were like trying to, trying to have a discussion about or the way we were trying to word it. And it just came out when we were talking to another agent and I was like, oh, there we go. That's what we've been looking for. It's, we have the partnership with the brokerage. We grow with the brokerage, the brokerage grows with us. That's awesome. That's what you want. Absolutely. And you can totally quote me on PTD if you need to. It's fine. Yeah. No worries. Just <laughs> Garrison is the one that ultimately came up with this. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Cool, man. Appreciate you taking the time getting together with me. We've been trying to put it together for a little bit. And I definitely think that we have the ability to add value, to bring real and also bring the family tree to other agents and other potential agents out there. And I, I would just encourage people, if you are interested, the link's down here, right there, there and, we go. and check it out. It's join.garrisonre.com. And it'll get you over. You can start looking at what real can offer. And it's a lot, man. And I really enjoy my time with the company so far. And I also, it's not like it's a whole lot. Like EXP wasn't super expensive on a monthly basis, but it's just nice not even having like a monthly fee. Yep. I hate when it's okay. It's been, I haven't had a deal in a little bit. And then I just see that transaction on the credit card and I was like, God dang it. And just, so just even no monthly fee, you still get revenue, you get a better split. It's just, there's so many bennies too real. And I like the culture of the company. And then as an investor, not having that extra microscope on you because you're doing some deals occasionally off market or whatever. And so it's been great for me so far. And I look forward to doing more and, and connecting with you more on it. Hey, talk, tell the people where to find you and where we can go, where they can find out more about Matt Potter. Most days you can find me hiding in my office right here. <laughs> no, you can reach out to me on Instagram. My Facebook is maxed out. So I just tell people to go to Instagram now. It's at Matthew Potter Realtor. Also, if you have short sale needs, have anything that smells like a short sale, want to know more about short sales, go ahead and go to, there we go, phoenixshortsale.com. Yes, it's specific for Phoenix, but ultimately it's for all 50 states. So you can go there. And then like Ryan said, if you want to know more about Rio or Family Tree or anything, hit him up, like reach out to him and learn about it. And dude, you nailed it. Not having a monthly fee, huge, like Mm -hmm. huge. It's again, it's not a big fee, but it's one of those things where, you know, if you go six months and you're like, dude, I just spent 500 plus dollars on nothing. Like, Mm -hmm. I I don't care who you are. $500 adds up very quickly. Like it, it does. And with the cost of items now, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hey, it's probably better to keep that in your pocket. And when the time comes that you're actually realizing revenue, having money, having money come out as a split, that's probably a little more advantageous to your bank account. It Mm -hmm. is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And then I'm going to, I'm going to turn this off and look forward to connecting you on the next one. That sounds like a plan, man.